Hello, my name is Voya and welcome to my deep guide. Well, today's video is something rather special. Yes, we have the re Stone R1 right here at my deep guide. So how did this actually come to be? A quick introduction for those who don't know what is this re stone madness. Well, back in 2021, I'm inclined to say, I think it was 2021, summer of 2021, they announced a uh, Kickstarter campaign and they uh, wanted to launch a 10-inch device which uses a completely new technology, the DES panel technology, which is a slurry display, which is a color panel, and it promised to be much better than the e-ink Kaleido screen like a complete revolution and things like that. Fast forward to now, um, their Kickstarter, came, their original goal of delivering in November 2021 was like poof, bash, bashed through. Then by the summer of 2022, they stopped communicating and they stopped communicating to such a degree that Kickstarter actually disabled they, their campaign and only to re-enable it now a couple of months ago uh, because they started shipping out some of the devices to some of the backers not all of the backers so that's the quick kind of rundown of this this is an android 11 tablet it's writing capable and the main thing is the des color panel as a lot of you know i did not back this project in fact i was actually actively warning people against it so how am i holding one well it's all thanks to a very very kind viewer by the name of nuretin eminaga and i thank him so sincerely because he reached out to me and said hey i have received the reading stone r1 and i have received the top joy butterfly the six inch version and i think that it would be useful for the community if you got your hands on them so that you can do an in-depth review present it to the people and all of that and he actually did that so that i think is absolutely fantastic and an absolutely amazing uh, uh, uh yeah just show of of kindness generosity and everything so i'm going to be testing these out uh, for a couple of weeks and then of course returning them back to nuretin he mentioned one thing that's very very important and he didn't ask anything in return like nothing he even insisted on paying the shipping and i could not dissuade him from it okay but the only thing he asked in return is to actually mention that i know that you're pursuing a tech focused channel but would it still be possible for you to state that donations for the earthquake victims of the turkey and syria are still very much needed and i think that that is a very very important message to actually convey so I do want to uh, remind people that there was a catastrophic earthquake that happened just a little while ago and thousands, tens of thousands of people are still, hundreds of thousands of people are still suffering. So there is a need, a very active need for donations and for help for that region. If you're wondering how you can help, that's up to you. That's completely up your choice. I prefer personally prefer something like UNICEF or something like that, but it's completely up to you. Nuretin mentioned two alternatives that he himself personally uses, which are I myself donate to the equivalent of the Red Cross in Turkey. And another large alternative is Ahbap NGO, which assumably attracts even more donations. You will find the links in the description down below, but I do invite you to actually consider that because people are in need. Okay, now let's check out what the first impressions are of the reading stone r1 because please do read the title of the video above it doesn't say review it says unboxing and first impressions and that's the only thing that we're going to be doing here so not an in-depth review just first impressions all right and here's everything that was sent to me so so kindly for the reviewing purposes so um you get the pen some extra nibs i guess with the tools as well we'll unpack everything this would be the folio and of course the device itself so let's start with the 
device, unboxing the device and see how does that look like. The box itself I really do like. If this is something that I had received without the delays and without the no communication, things like that, then I would have been actually happy because this is nicely designed, to be quite honest. So let's open this carefully up. And then you get the R1 here. And then when you open it up, here comes the device itself. So I'm going to pull it out of the packaging. And inside we get supporting the communication and a USB-C cable. These on the sides, they do not open, even though they look like they were designed that they could open. And I think that probably the pen could have you know, easily fitted in here, if this is the real size of the pen, and some extra nibs there. So maybe they could have saved on packaging if this was done a little bit more smartly, because there's definitely room in there for that. So in the first box, the standard box, you get the re-ink stone supporting documentation and a USB-C cable. I forgot, like if you do get the pen with every order, but you know, it's a simple affair and you know, to, to no one's surprise, this is the bog standard, the cheapest of the cheap lot. Very, very familiar pen to anyone who has actually used an old books device. So if you had like a books note, one Nova one, um, I don't know, Nova two, and all of those, they use the same bog standard pen. So this is like a five-year-old pen, maybe even six-year-old pen that's not that good and there's a reason why books has moved away from it. However, that's the pen that is included as standard with a re-ink stone for the backers. And here you get the extra nibs and the uh, nib extraction tool. So this type of packaging and everything, this is, for those who don't know, this is pretty much exactly the same as the book's uh, nibs are. So obviously this is kind of supplied, they're supplying from the same factory, they're just printing different kind of things. And I'm pretty sure that these are the, yeah, they look very much the same book's nibs that you get with this as well. But there you go, you get how many? Let's see how many extra nibs. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Ten extra nibs and one in the pen itself. That should last you quite a while. And then you also add to the package the, let's see where it was opened. Here is safe to open, yes, because it's not mine and I need to return this kindly. So I wanna keep good care of it. And this is the um, cover, which is very, very nice. I have to say that it feels very good. It's uh, it's not, it just looks like textile. So you can see that it has this kind of textile denim-ish type of surface, uh, but it's not. This is kind of rubberized plastic, but it does feel good. And you do have this kind of a bucket design here, which is supposed to hold the device. These corners, that's not going to last one fall and this this chips off immediately because this is the really really cheap plastic you can see the edge here as well um so this is a very very sharp and cheap plastic and yeah not not a great design that's gonna fall apart pretty much immediately um so i wish i or would have seen something else something different employed because that's not a lasting design. However, that's also what you get as the whole package. So the whole package is the device, the cover, supporting documentation, USB-C cable, bog standard, super cheap dated pen, and 10 extra nibs. So that's the full on bonanza if you ordered the whole thing with everything included. All right, now let's focus on what we really want to see. All right, so here is the device and let's take it very, very carefully out from the protective pouch. And it's, well, you already have some shades on the screen. So we'll, we'll talk about that. 
But let's first address the device itself. How does it look like? Well, I have to say that it feels good, mainly because it is metal here on the sides and it is metal back. What's interesting about this construction is that it's not a full on bucket because you can actually see that there's like a metal frame around it and then there's a metal back plate which is clearly separated from this one. And then you have, of course, the front panel, which is completely different. So that's actually not a typical bucket design. And this is the Re-Ink Stones approach to their tablet, which is fairly, uh, yeah, I, I don't know if it's super original, but it's definitely a cost saving measure because usually that bucket is something that kind of keeps everything, um, the insides super protected, but maybe there was, maybe there was another reason for something like that. The device looks nice. I like the color. I definitely do like the color and I do like the finishing. It feels like a higher quality product and it does not feel or look cheap at all. On the back, re Inkstone logo in the upper right. On the bottom, you have the legal mambo jumbo. On the front of the screen, you have the <laughs> blotchy screen. Then you have the re Inkstone on the side. And the surface itself, the top of the screen, you can see it in the reflections probably, it's not super glassy smooth, it's actually paper-like, which is quite nice to see. The reflectivity, as far as I can see, so that's the super bright window, where's the light? I'm trying to catch the, there we go, that's the regular light and that's the big light and this is the other big light. So the reflectivity is actually quite okay, definitely on the good side of things as far as the reflectivity goes of the surface on the re ink stone. So these are quite, quite nice things to see. As far as the layout goes, we have a completely flush screen, so nothing here. We have something that looks like a yeah, it does look like an, a uniform bezel all around the screen, which is in black. And then we have on the top or on the side, depending on how you're oriented, a blue um, yeah, extension here, which could be served as a holder, but it's a bit of a too heavy of a device for something like that. So that's not something that I would kind of keep in mind. Um, ergonomics are not that great. This is not super sharp, but it's not ergonomically made to kind of dig into your palm, especially because it's metal and there's quite a lot of weight. Maybe it's better from here. Um, maybe marginally better, which indicates that the battery is maybe down here because that's pulling quite heavy on the upper side. But either way, it's not that comfortable to use. And also the edges here, the margins here, or the bezel is very, very thin. So as a reader, this is not something that would be very, it, I, I don't think it's too comfortable to use in uh, as a one-handed thing. In this mode, definitely yes, because you have this extension and you can kind of support the additional weight here. So it's not a big deal. Uh, it's something that you can use, but it is definitely on the weightier side of things and on the uh, thicker side of things. As far as the continuation of the layout goes, on the top, bottom, or the side, whatever you want to kind of call it. Let's call it top because there's a ring stone here. So let's call this top. We have the USB-C. I would believe that this is the LED indication, status indication, stereo speakers. Then on the side, we have a power button or maybe that's a reset. I don't know. Uh, then we have a power button, nothing on the other side and microphone, stereo microphone, I guess, on the opposite side of that. And that is the layout of the re Stone R1. Overall, I'm quite impressed with the design and the overall approach of the re Stone R1. I think that it's a very pretty looking device. I think that it's a contemporary looking device. It's definitely not dated. It looks modern. It's using modern materials and all of the things like that. You can see that the seals, of which there are several, you have them on top and the bottom, of the panels. However, they are consistent. There are no gaps. There are no 
uh, problems that I can see of any kind and everything is very very consistent the fitting of the buttons and everything else is very very nicely done and yeah the, the milling of the holes for the speakers everything is nice and precise and it definitely looks and feels like a high quality product that is for sure so for example the last one that I was looking at was Quaderno, which was like wobbly and had, you know, kind of panel gaps and sure, yes, oh, it's plastic, but it's also built really, really badly. And this one isn't, for example. So this looks like a very nice design, something that I like, not too ergonomic, but it has excellent reflectivity performance of the screen. It's a little bit on the heavier and chunkier side of things, but the build quality seems to be quite, quite nice and feels like a high quality device. All right, so let's do the first power up here and just first impressions because I'm very, very much interested in the performance and the look of the screen itself because that is the whole point of the Re-Inkstone and why both Re-Inkstone and Topjoy are interesting devices because they employ the DES technology or the DES screen. So I am very, very curious to see how does that uh, look like and how does it actually perform. I'm not going to focus on um, functionalities and things like that. This is going to be, as I said, and as the title of the video says, this is not a review. This is first impressions and unboxing. So please do keep that in mind before you start stomping on the comments. Oh, this review doesn't cover everything I wanted. It's because it's not a review. So please do keep that in mind. So let's go and set up here. English, okay, the touch responsiveness is not that great, okay. Well, all right, already during the initial setup, I am experiencing issues. It was completely unable to connect on my five gigahertz uh, Wi-Fi, so I am forced to use the 2.4 gigahertz uh, Wi-Fi, which is quite strange. Well, all right, finally I got the Ah, the whole setup uh, done and even though I set it up to Central European time, which is where I'm kind of there, it doesn't understand the, um, it's not, it's not correct because it's not using daytime savings. So I'm going to see how does it look like if you just want to change your settings here, because that's what I do want. Wow, magic. I gotta see what magic is. What? Wow, magic is going from blurry to sharp. Okay, you gotta see this because there's no way you can actually notice it uh, from way over there. So you can see the blurriness and sharpness. And now it's as if magic it's sharper. Uh, it drastically affects the quality. So I'm going to keep it at the better, higher quality to see how that works. Then we have acceleration. And that's 100. That's just clearing out the cache. But where's the settings? Ah, settings. There we go. So this is exposed remarkable. <laughs> uh, sorry. And this, so this is uh, expose the remarkable UI part here. Uh, and then you can go to settings. Okay, use 24 hour format. But where's daytime savings? Time zones are not listed according to the time. You would expect them to go, you know, according to the um, time zones. And at some point we don't even, it stops saying what the GMT is. Wow, We're, we haven't even started with anything. I just want to set up my time. That's the state of the software here. So I think I better leave it at CET, Central European Standard Time, and adjust this manually. So we are at 1440 because of the daytime savings. Okay, that was, uh, that was, not a great first impression. Okay, so let's go home. I'm not gonna do any update checks or anything like that. There's gonna be like two things that I'm interested in. First one, reading stuff so they can see how the colors look like. Hopefully they have some 
documents here that could demonstrate that. Be oh, okay. So magic on the nice quality that I was talking about is the black and white. And then in order to actually have color, you have to have this totally mushy, really, really bad image quality over. Well, that's a considerable trade-off. That's uh, that's quite a big of a trade-off. However, the colors are there. So that's definitely something that uh, works. Okay, so let's see if we can... Does it have any standard gestures? None. Okay. Uh, user manual English is like this. So this is... This is how the user manual English looks like. I don't know if I've done something to it or not, but so I, I was about to comment that it's nice that, you know, the first thing that you see are, uh, you know, you can have uh, ringstone, whatever, and user manual China, Japanese and English. And then I tap on this one and, and then I get this. So maybe, does it have an accelerometer? Maybe it wants to do it on the side. But did this, uh, okay, let's, uh, this is not working. <laughs> like, okay, let's see where the auto rotation mode is. It's, do I really have to go into, okay, so this is for writing. I might as well while I'm there. Okay, let's go into writing mode. Ballpoint pen. Well, we want to write in color. That's the whole point. Let's see. Let's go medium. What's going on? Am I not in a writing mode? I, I am confused. Okay, well, whoa, okay. Um, ta-da. <laughs> um, I don't, I'm, okay, there we go, that's gone. So we have some colors here, but holy moly, the, the software side of things is um, not that stable. How do we create a notebook to actually write on? Okay, is this, this is create a new folder. So let's go my new folder. And it's able to actually track normal typing. So that's good. So, oh, save, okay. So that's my new folder. And then I go into my new folder. And how do I create a notebook? I guess like this. Okay, that, that was very strange because it's like a pen and an underscore, which almost reads like a pen and a minus. So that's a strange icon, but okay, we're getting there. We're getting through. Um, again, really inspired by Remarkable, aren't you? Like they're inspired by Remarkable, Lenovo is inspired by the Remarkable's UI. Hmm, not, not nice. So now can I choose red? and thickness to be fine secondary crude <laughs> that's so weird and finally can we actually start writing this is my first time writing on the re one. I gotta say that it's far better than what I expected. However, this pen should be thrown to the trash. And I wanna see what it looks like when you actually use a normal EMR pen. So this is a Kindle Scribe premium pen. Now, when using a good pen, the Rating on the R1 ray in stone is actually. I might 
the frame? Yes, I am. Quite pleasant. This is actually pleasant and quick, and it has the book's style of refinement of basically refining the writing strokes. Let's switch to blue. I wish, why, why no green? Huh, well, let's, let's see, crude. Uh, this, this is the same thickness. Crude, have we switched to crude this time? Yes, we have. This is the crude thickness. Let's see, does this work? Kind of. Does the pen, does the button work? It does, but it's super slow. So the eraser is epic how slow it is. Let's see, can we change it to a region? Uh, area erase, maybe that's going to perform better. Uh, like this, and then go away. Like this, and then area erase. Area erase. No, of course not. It will just work like this. Okay. Um, we're having, we're starting to see some issues with the screen that it's the the ghosting is really really weird and that's why they've included i guess refresh no that's back what how is it empty when i created a new notebook where's my notebook hello what the hell where where's my notebook maybe in the note in the note. Oh, okay, okay, I get it. They're they're completely remarkable style. All right, so that's my no, 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 no. Come on, that's not my notebook. Well, I'm kind of happy that the camera was rolling because. My notebook is now mysteriously gone uh, by just going back. <laughs> okay, uh, not the best. So, um, so far the impressions are not the best at all. I'm gonna transfer something here so that we can actually see the image quality and the performance of the colors. Phew, uh, <laughs> I managed somehow to transfer everything. Uh, Hooking it up to the computer was not easy and transferring files was actually not easy because it would just randomly fail. Well, not randomly. Then I figured out that it doesn't like long file names. So it would just like without any error, it would just reject receiving uh, large file files with a long, um, uh, long file name. However, I should have test documents here and there we go we have the transferred documents so the first thing that i want to see this is going to be for my testing but the first thing that i want to see is that first impressions is a color document rich with colors rich with content there we go because that is supposed to be the whole point of the device wow um it's not blocked it's loading uh, it's trying to focus the camera is trying to focus but you can see here loading and right now it's, it's <laughs> that's incredibly impressive all right what is this handwriting is on handwriting is off Okay, so that's where you enable handwriting. That was my mistake earlier, why I couldn't write. Um, but how do I expose a menu for the reader? Oh no, he's loading the next page. So can I actually navigate, jump to page? Like, let's just jump to a page to get out of 
whatever he is doing now. 67. Confirm. Confirm. And that is done quickly. That is done very quickly. So let's see. Maybe that's just the software is completely messed up. Let's try and go to page 56. 50. I'm tired. All right. So it's not the device's fault or the screen's fault. There we go. Now he is starting to perform better. Okay. Maybe he was trying to figure things out in some way. Well, the display is fairly reddish, uh, but the quality is quite good. Uh, the colors are nice. That's the whole point of it is that the it has a color and it's nice type of coloring. It looks like a document, I would say. So you can actually see that the image quality is not bad at all. And this is in the color mode. So here's some more color examples looking very, very nice and also quite readable at the same time. So yes, for what it needs to be, it definitely works. Does the auto rotation work at all? No, it doesn't. So I would have to kind of find a way where the rotation is because it's not in the upper part. So can we pinch to zoom? Uh, I guess not. Well, the navigation and the performance is really not that bad at all. Yes, there's some ghosting, but nothing catastrophic and the details are very pleasant. So this is very, very pleasant to actually read and look at, especially if you want to enjoy the color content. Now, let's expose the refresh and have a fully refreshed image here without any ghosting so that you can see the clarity and the details. We do have some color banding, as you can see here, and the details, more of the details there. And in the demanding situations where we have transparency and lots of contrast, it's able to handle that quite well. So my first impression with the image quality and the performance of the screen, which is the main thing that I'm interested in, is basically it's quite okay. There's, it's nothing blisteningly fast. This is fairly on a slower basis, but if you're just reading and flipping through, this is quite nice. So let me see if I can find somehow, wow, what's happening with the battery? Whoa, the battery is going, going down real fast. So this is contrast control. So I can lower the contrast all the way down and then it's completely washed out. So that's too much. Let's put the contrast somewhere in the middle. Okay, so that's the default is all the way there. Let's see what we get when it's a middle and let's turn the front light off completely and let's refresh. So you can see what we get was the performance of the screen and the performance is not bad. I mean, it's definitely better than Kaleido. Like there's absolutely no question about it that the DS image quality, pure image quality and the clarity of colors and everything, absolutely better than Kaleido. Is it something that I like? Eh, no, I do not like it. And there seems to be a reason why they've said it, that this is the contrast level that it should be at, okay? And when you're at that contrast level, then the image quality is rather impressive and it's like striking, but that's because of the strong contrast, but you know, not, not bad at all. So this is without the front light on. And then if I turn the front light before the battery completely dies, and there's only cold front light that is present, but it does brighten things up and it doesn't wash them out too much. So it is something that uh, seems to be working okay. This is nice and demanding. Let's see what it looks like. Refresh. Ooh. Okay, so the front light is not a friend to the DES screen. So let's turn it off and do a full screen refresh. And let's see what we get. Nope, he's he's unable to clear this part out. 
So it seems to be that um, the screen is almost like getting tired after a while. Now it's better. Okay, so it is looking okay. I do miss obviously the thing that they promised warm and cold. Nope, it does not have the battery. Will, oh my God, the battery is falling as we speak. I must hurry. Okay. Um, and uh, when we turn the magic on, then it's black and white. I just want to see the image quality when it's like this. Yes, we have color banding. Uh, okay, no pressure. Let's lower the contrast. Let's lower the contrast all the way. That's too much. Let's do half and see what it looks like. Okay, it's rather washed out, so it cannot handle low contrast. It can just handle the default contrast. Everything uh, underneath it is just not going to work. But at these values, it is nice, crisp and clean. And the image quality is cool. It would be nice if the software would support um, dithering of some sort or of a better sort, because this is not really that great. And of course, yeah, we can just turn the color back on. And there we go. And now we have the color. All right. So before the battery completely dies, oh, that looked nice. That doesn't that look nice. It does. It really does. It's a very, very nice image quality on the re -ink stone R1. All right. So that's that's what I got for first impressions. Where's the apps? I just want to see if we have Google Play or do I uh, do we have time for that? App. <gasps> what? Where's Google Play? I have to read and I'll have to check these things because there's no Google Play here by default. So maybe you have to enable it or sideload it or something like that. We will see. However, that is, uh, these are the first impressions and that's the first look at the long overdue Re-Ink Stone R1. Come on, go home. Come on. I realized I didn't do one thing, which is put it into the uh, cover so that we see how does that look like. Uh, okay, maybe. Maybe you first go into the corners like so, and then get this. Okay. Um, I'm not a fan of how this is set up. The, the holding mechanism and everything, putting it in and out is not something that I'm a fan of. So let's see, magnets. Are there some magnets here to hold it? Well, if there are, they're not strong. Might be a small magnet there, but not really. So this is the whole package. It looks very nice. It really does. So I think that the hardware side of it is quite good. Uh, stop doing that, whatever it is that you're doing. Stand by low power. Um, and I guess we can just turn it around like this or, yeah so yeah it can get into this stand and then you can just use it as a reader which is quite nice so you know the bare minimum that i would expect from a cover i think that the cover does uh however i really really do not like the uh the 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 holding mechanism and since this is not my own and i need to return it in a good state uh, I am going to just carefully take the device out of this bucket and not put it back in because I have zero confidence in these two little plastic pieces sticking out that they're not going to fall apart at any second. Well, okay, my first impressions with the Ringstone R1 is that um, I didn't expect it to be as well built as it actually is because it feels like a well built device. So that exceeded my expectations for sure. The design is the same as they showed it and that's nice. So it's a nice design. I already said in the initial coverages way, way back when that I like the design of it, but in combination with the build quality, it's actually quite, quite nice and fetching. So hardware seems pretty, pretty good. 
However, I was not surprised at all, unfortunately, with the performance of the software. So my first impressions are that this is a very, very, very faulty uh, or software that's not finished and it's lacking a lot of features. Uh, another thing that surprised me was that the writing latency, even though I didn't measure it, it's actually quite fast on the re Inkstone R1, which is a nice thing to see. The colors are better than the Kaleido panels, which is something that I expected, and it's something that actually works rather well on the re Inkstone R1. So the potential of the DES panel is definitely there, and it's, it's an interesting technology for sure, and it is, it seems to be, fast enough that you can use it as a writable notebook. However, in the case of the Reading Stone R1, first impressions again are that it's just a demonstration of the technology, but the, the underlying platform is severely lacking and it's very, very unstable. However, um, further testing will be performed. So I'm going to be doing all of the testing that I do normally on these devices so you can see how it actually performs. And normally during that testing period, I can actually see the uh, uh, stability issues and it exposes all of the other issues that um, normally you can't see if you just kind of test it out like I've shown here in a first impressions kind of a uh, setting. Well, I hope that you found the video interesting. Please do check out the donation links uh, in the bottom or find the organization that you prefer to use, but do consider donating to the victims and to the regions of the horrible earthquake that happened in the Turkish Syria region earlier this year. A huge thank you to Nuretin again for making this actually possible and thank you so much for watching. So stay safe, stay healthy and see you in the next video. Bye!